Hello everybody. Today we are tuning up a customer's 1989 Specialized Stump Jumper team. They just got this bike um, recently and so we're gonna do some stuff to get it ready um, for riding this spring. We're gonna install new grips, move the bar ends to, um, to where they're supposed to be, new tires, and then just an overall tune-up. So quick, I'll quick give you a, a tour of the bike. If you haven't seen one of these before, they're pretty cool. I really like the, the gray to white paint scheme. Really fun gray to white. And then with the, like the pink magenta logos, pink and orange down here. Tang Prestige, made in Japan. Dior, Let's see what are these? M M730 crank set with those good old BioPace chain rings. M735 rear derailleur. Which is, that may not be stock. I'll have to check, I'll have to actually check the, the specs. Cause that may be a little later than 89, newer. Um, XT M732 rear hub. It's got the big old brake cables. Specialized seat post collar. This is a, not sure what brand the saddle is. Um, yeah, so we gotta lower the stem. You can see this uh, stem is significantly past the uh, safety mark. So we're gonna bring that back down. See the front, front's M730. Hoops are specialized GX13 in the, the front. And then Sun Chinook in the rim, on the rear. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's lived a life. Um, you know, shifters are in good condition. Brake levers are good. So yeah, we're just going to tune it and swap out the tires and the grips and get it ready to ride. Six mil, we'll remove these bar ends. Okay, and these old grips are just garbage. So we're just gonna cut them off. That's the easiest. Okay, so we need to cut off the built-in end cap on the um, grip so that we can run the bar ends. Um, these are the grips they wanted, so I'm just gonna modify them so they work. What I find works easiest to cut these ones off is just to go at it with the Dremel and a cutting wheel. Now this is plastic, so it kind of builds up, so you kind of have to stop and um, clear it out and then keep going. We're just gonna wrap it in a rag and lightly put it in the vise to, to hold it while we uh, modify the end. I really like these grips. I think these lizard skin grips um, are really good value lock on grip. And you don't want to make it tight, too tight, because we don't want to squish the lock on. So you just want to get it in there, um, you know, nicely. Back bench is a little messy, but um, yeah. So then we're gonna take the Dremel. I slow it down to one, um, and I'm just going to start cutting the uh, the end of the grip off. So you gotta pick off all the, the burnt plastic. Well, melted plastic might be a better word for it. And then, it doesn't look too bad. We're gonna sand this all smooth, 
and because there's a lip you know we really don't cut in we didn't we try not to and did a good job of not cutting into the into the grip so we're just going to sand this up clean it up and we'll go install it so i sanded the end um with just a high grit sanding block and got it all smooth so we're going to install that like so and then install the bar end and voila so that is new grips and bar ends we won't tighten those until i get them on the ground so i can figure out where the right spot is but we do need to get plugs in the ends here oh luckily we have a uh, a bunch of those. Um, we need to lower the stem because it's above the safety hash marks. And we put the grips on first so we'd have the right position of the brake lever. So when we adjust the brake, everything is as it should. So now we're gonna lower that stem back to the safety hash marks it's barely in there like the safety hash line is right here so we're a good inch and a quarter above oh yeah that was nice and tight to be expected she is seized go. So now we'll disengage the brake. And pull that out of there. We're going to apply some new grease. We're also going to grease up This little mechanism. Now we're gonna pop this back in here and lower it to right there, which is where the safety mark is. So you'll see after lowering the stem, we've got a, a lot of slack in our brake cable. So to adjust these brakes, we need, and we have some cracked pads. So we're gonna have to get some new pads out to replace both of these. So you can see here the crack in the pad. Crack in the pad there too. Check the rear while we're at it. And that one's cracked in, I don't know if it's, you can see that, but that one's cracked in multiple places. So we're gonna need new sets of pads. We are gonna run this style of canty pad. Um, more braking surface will help add braking power. So we're gonna install these first because these are narrower than the old path so we'll, we'd have to adjust the brake anyhow so we're going to install these front and rear these are just jig wires uh, and then we'll get cracking the new pads are on and i started to adjust the brakes but the wheels are out of true so before we go too far um in adjusting the brakes we're going to get the wheels true which means we're going to put the new tires on that way we're um, adjusting the brakes to a true rim and not an untrue rim. If you hear that, we're getting a little bit of rub in one spot. So we're going to take both these wheels off. The bike just has some Michelin country rock 
like hybrid tires on it. We're gonna put some specialized uh, fast tracks on, which will be a much more mountain bike tire, and he'll be able to ride some single track with some traction. I thought that the wheel didn't look centered in the dropouts, and here we can see that we have a gap on this side of the train stand. We're just touching on this side. Um, I did just put in my centering gauge to double check my stand. Um, and yeah, it is, it's dead on. So we need to shift the rim this way. So we need to dish the rim to the non-drive side, see the skewer. So to do that, we are going to start at the valve hole and we are going to give a quarter of a turn loose to all the drive side spokes, quarter of a turn tight to all the non-drive side spokes. We're going to work our way all the way around when we get all the way back to the valve stem, we'll spin the wheel and we will see where we are if we've centered ourselves up anymore. So let's uh, give this a go. After one round, we are still got a gap on this side, so we're going to do it again. We're going to loosen the drive side spoke, tighten the non drive side spoke. That is going to shift the rim over, and slowly we are going to get rid of this gap. So that time I went around two more times, and you'll see we're just barely touching. We're just barely not touching, I should say. We're just barely not touching. So, now we have it dished. We need to just re-true it. Um, it's really not that bad. If you listen, we have one spot we need to fix. So, we're gonna. I'm going to true this and clean it. And then we'll be back to the bike. While I have the wheels out, I'm going to give this thing a bath. Um, it is disappointing that someone went after this non-green bike with green touch-up paint. Um, I know they were trying to protect the frame. Touch-up paint always looks bad unless it is an exact match, which is difficult to do, you know, because things fade, etc., etc. I almost think the raw metal looks better if you know you just leave it if you're worried about rust you know you can coat it with different polishes or uh you know oils there's different materials or even clear coat um that looks better than you know especially than a completely unmatched not even trying paint um but i mean it's just this is just use you know and uh it tells a story and unfortunately, the last chapter before now was green touch-up paint. But we're going to clean it, get it looking nice. Um, and uh, get this goop off and the tape. And uh, I'll put the wheels back on. You know, it's, yeah, it's... For sure the front derailleur is an original. I don't believe the rear derailleur is original, but I need to look it up. Um, and then though obviously the wheels are mismatched my assumption is the front is correct the rear is not which makes sense rear wheels get damaged as I've talked about in previous videos rust and steel bikes don't mix so here there's some rust around this bottom cup of the headset on the head tube and I took the pick sorry about that cable um I'm just checking to make sure that, you know, nothing is, it's not structural. Um, yeah, you are going to have to scrape some paint to check this, but it's better to know um, if it's good or not and lose some paint than, uh, you know, have a, have a hole in your in your frame and not know so it feels solid we're gonna clean it up um 
Ooh. Oh, that's the paint chip too. Yeah, so no holes, you know, not sure why moisture built up there. Maybe moisture got into the head tube and then seeped out on top of the cup, but yeah, we're gonna wipe it down, clean it up. We'll put some um, polish over it so it's not bare metal and uh, we'll be good. But yeah, just always keep an eye on spots like that. On top of some rust, rust spots and paint chips, we also have some scuffing on the paint, but that we can take care of. We're just gonna put some wizards on a, on a rig and we're just gonna give that a little scrubbing. So yeah, it's coming off. It's a little bit of elbow grease. This paint actually has like some pearlescent in it. It's pretty cool. So yeah. There was a big black scuff. It's now clean. So I'm just going around the frame, finding all those spots and giving it a, uh, a clean and then we're gonna get it put together. We have the new tires installed, some fast tracks, um, front and rear. This front wheel is now dished, so that's gonna help with our brake adjustment. Turns out, while I was cleaning and lubing the chain, that we have a twisted link, so we actually need a new chain. And so that is a reason why is good to inspect your chain. So we're gonna pop this chain off and we're gonna put a new chain on. So new chain is on and while we're back here, we are going to adjust the derailleur, but also hearing the hub, it needs to be repacked. Um, so I'm gonna do that too, but we're gonna just the derailleur first. Try to do one thing at a time here so I don't get too distracted. Took the hub apart, got the bearings, the seal. It's pretty dirty in there. So just cleaning everything. Um, gonna get the axle clean. So far, I haven't noticed much signs of pitting. A little bit of pitting, but nothing to be worried about yet. But I'm just gonna keep cleaning these parts, clean all the bearings. Get this side repacked. We got the hub cleaned out on both sides. And it looks pretty good. You know, there's some minor pitting, but that's to be expected with the age of this rim. So I'm gonna finish cleaning the bearings and get it all repacked. So the front brake, the non-drive side one, just did not really have any return and it turned out that the brake um, boss was super corroded as you can see in the brake it was super rusty so just taking some high grit sandpaper to the boss I'm gonna do the same to this and just clear it clean it up um, scotch bright also works you know you just need to Get that smooth again so that, uh, and then I'll put a dab of grease on there so that everything moves the way it should to get these brakes adjusted properly. So now that we're done, there's a quick tour. We installed the new tires that he brought, front and rear new brake pads, a new chain because his. The chain had a twisted link. Um, rebuilt the rear hub, trued the front wheel and the rear wheel, installed new grips, which we modified to work with bar ends, lowered the stem back to the safety mark, adjusted the brakes front and rear. You know, it's, it's a pretty cool piece. I still, um, yeah, I like it. So yeah, that is 89 stump jumper team um, hope you enjoyed the video if you did please like and subscribe um, for more great vintage mountain bike content 
If you're working on a project of your own, make sure to check out our website, greenengineer.com. Um, we have a thousand plus vintage parts for mountain bikes and road bikes, 80s and 90s mostly. Um, we also have a lot of resources such as hard to find catalogs, etc. Um, have a great rest of your day. Bye.